Hey gang, did you miss the Stage 3 Alpha Showcase stream from Saga of Leucemia and you don't feel like watching a 3 hour stream? Well you're lazy, but we got you covered. So gang, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be breaking down the Showcase 3 Alpha Stream from Saga of Leucemia. I am going to cover 8 points and a couple of bonus things along the way um, that I think are essential and on a need to know basis of Saga of Leucemia. At any given point of this video, you think you're interested in trying out Saga of Leucemia, uh, you can pre-order the game and you can use our affiliate link to pre-order the game which supports us. Now, right now, they're in Sage 3 Alpha Testing and you can help test too for a limited time on the weekend. So, again, if you wanna pre-order, that's great. Be sure to use our link. If you don't wanna use our link, that's fine too. Help support the game. Um, so, with that being said, we're gonna kinda go ahead and just get into the stream uh, and talk about some points they covered. First thing right out the gate, let's just get this out of the way. This won't take long. Um, Ren does go into great detail in talking about this, but there will be no mini-maps in Saga of Leucemia. We've had people in the past be like, well, how do I know where to go? How do I get around? We're gonna talk a little bit more about landmarks later on in the stream, but one of the first things I want to point you to is uh, that pop-up that happened on the screen also is down in the chat, which my face is kind of covering in the stream here. Um, but you'll notice that it says something here. To the east, the mountains of mist loom above. And if we actually look up to the mountains there, you'll see that there's mountains to the east. So even though there's no mini-map, um, many times the description text of quests and NPCs who talk to you, they will be giving you uh, directions and landmark things of note which will help you navigate the landscape. And Ren has a lot to say about this throughout the entire three hour stream which w will be in the description down below. Um, he kind of use, uses good examples about you know a fantasy world versus a sci-fi world you know you, you you don't have gps in fantasy realms um and he, he kind of does some comparisons to fantasy characters from lord of the rings and you know put yourself in in this saga of leucemia realm very important he just gave us directions he said go north along the road keep the river on your left right so, and as Ren goes on to explain landmarks and stuff... Wait, you mean I gotta read all my quests? Mm-hmm. What the f***? Who writes this stuff? Anyway, last thing I want to say about this subject. No mini-maps, paying attention. Um, you, as the stream goes on and they get into some group play, you start to see this come to life. You start to see a real feel of a world when you're having to, to do these sorts of things and you just don't see that in most modern MMOs. So basically, Ren at one point just starts preaching uh, a lot of what Battle Axe has preached in our previous videos and in our streams. Compass with the waypoint on it and they're just beelining for that waypoint. At the same time, if you're following an NPC that's leading you through the dungeon, they're running. You're trying to keep up. You're trying to protect them. It's an escort quest or whatever the case may be. All of that art that the artists spent dozens if not hundreds of hours to create is just being wasted and ignored because I want to get to the end. I want to go fast, fast, fast. Our game is not about fast, fast, fast. Our game is about slowing down, taking the time to immerse yourself in the world, to enjoy, to explore, to relish in the beauty in the landscape. Um, so we're not really worried about it. There are people who appreciate it. Not everyone does, but there are people who do, but that's it's not a concern of ours at all. Now that that's out of the way, we have to talk about what I would like to consider the meat and potatoes of Saga of Leucemia. Uh, this is, of course, the mastery system. 
In the Saga of Lucime, your character is defined by abilities that allow you to excel in both combat and non-combat scenarios, as well as crafting and beyond. Abilities are grouped within skill trees called Masteries. Note that Masteries also have associated statistics which impact your base stats, allowing you to grow stronger as you earn more Masteries through the gameplay. Um, for now, choose a mastery to get started, and don't worry, you can always change your selection later on if you decide you want to try something different. So there is a brief, um, go ahead and close that down, there's a brief description if you hover over each one of these, but they're fairly self-explanatory. Um, they're groupings of skills, anyone who's ever played, I guess like um, Skyrim or Oblivion will be familiar with kind of skill groupings, you know, so... Uh, each one of these masteries has a series of skills within it. And instead of leveling your character's level, you level the masteries that you obtain. Pretty cool. Now, as he continues to follow the tutorial right off the docks, right off the bat, you get a mastery. And then you keep following the dialogue, you eventually get another mastery here we'll get into this later on for those of you who are going to be playing so I open up my journal i go to my masteries page i now have duelist and if i open up my equipment panel uh, all of my stats start off at 10. you'll now notice that because i chose duelist i have a plus two to dex plus one to strength plus one to intelligence which also gives me a seven percent avoidance because of that sweet dexterity bonus and if i click on duelist i can see my abilities and i can drag them onto my hotbar now so as you get your first two masteries which you can choose anything you want i went uh blade dancer and i believe it's earth magic if i'm correct um so it's kind of neat you know you've got your you can mix it up however you want to mix it up um later on they talk about the survival mastery and then you can change these masteries at any time and go back to level leveling them up um, one thing they did uh, say that was pretty cool and this is kind of like a side note is as you level up these masteries your ability cooldowns will be quicker it's really kind of neat to see how this is the way they're doing leveling um, I'm gonna give a little greater explanation here on the difference between combat and utility masteries so the first four stats we have here are Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and Intelligence. These four stats govern all of the combat masteries in the game. So if you look at Archer, for example, it's uh, Strength, uh, excuse me, Dexterity, Strength, and Intelligence. Um, Knight is Constitution, Strength, and Intelligence, so on and so forth. All masteries give plus two to a primary stat, plus one and plus one to a secondary and tertiary stat. The utility stats are discipline, cunning, charisma, and perception. Now it's important to know that some of the utility um, masteries don't necessarily relate to combat. A good example of this would be survival. The survival mastery has sense heading, start fire, and forage within its line. These are not combat abilities. Um, sense heading allows you to know which direction you're going. Start fire allows you to start campfires in the wild. We're going to be talking about campfires later on in the stream. And forage is the foraging of uh, food items, which right now um, give, I believe, resists. And later on, you'll be able to forage things for crafting and foodstuffs later on. Um, tracking will also be going in the survival mastery as well other things. But for the purposes of stage three alpha, there's only three abilities in each line. And that's what we're working with for the moment. Yes! We get tracking. They're gonna have tracking. Sorry, I mean... Whew. There's no maps. But if I could have sense heading and tracking... So we talked about utility masteries and combat masteries. Uh, combat being, you know, melee and uh, magic. Um, so the the way the magic works in this game is pretty cool and Ring goes on to explain that. I just got uh, my second mastery which is a, a magical mastery and I need to have uh, I need I need a relic to cast things. So we have these kind of generic runes that we're using at the moment which you can think of as um, battery packs so to speak. Um, because magic is very rare in our game and the lore of the world is that magic was taken away from humans the way people cast magic is through the use of the... <laughs> He's like, whoops. Um, you'll cast magic through the use of these runes. Um, 
Runes can be found in the wild off of humanoids. You'll also get them at the end of quest lines. Um, relic items can also be weapons and armor, uh, so on and so forth. Um, they do have charges, and all of your abilities cost uh, something to cast. So as you can see, the customization that you can do with your character as you gain more masteries. But how do you gain more masteries? It's kind of a, a neat, uh, I don't want to call it a leveling system but it i uh, don't i don't know how to explain it no good so i'm gonna let Renfell do that but it's it's kind of neat on how you require new things and how it kind of uh motivates you to level up masteries and try new masteries if we go back to my journal i have two masteries um duelist and air and you notice i have a i have one in each one of those on the bottom right here, I have something called my Adventuring Mastery Level. This is the total mastery level of what I have. One plus one is two. So if this was three and this was seven, it would say ten. If this was twelve and this was, you know, whatever, you know, it would add up. So if I hover over this, it says you are capable of learning two Adventuring Masteries. What do you know? I have two. Um, at a total mastery level of twenty, you can learn an additional mastery. What that means is that when I get to a total level of 20, and that means I could ha I could level one of these all the way to 20, or I could level one to 13 and the other one to seven. The moment that I get to a total mastery level of 20, I can come back to this guy and click on this bench here, and I can pick up a third mastery. Um, and if I hover over these right now, it says you must have a total adventuring mastery level of 20 before you can learn a level level. Plus, I don't have enough funds right now because I'm a poor newbie who just started out so um i'm gonna have to go out there and adventure it 100 percent excited about the mastery system guys i'm really excited to get in there and see how creative i can be i love how it kind of intertwines and, and focuses uh group synergy um you know you're gonna have all and we'll get into this later on when they talk about darkness being in the realm um but anyway Ren goes on to discuss a little bit about combat, and I think it's very important that uh, I get this in this video. This is actually very important to understand in our game because not only can I target an offensive target like the target dummy, let me move the buff window out of the way, I can also target myself or a target member. So you can have a defensive and offensive target um, at the same time, which is great for these advanced combat scenarios because you can actually focus on you know, helping your group mates as well as, you know, attacking a mob without needing to switch between. And he goes on to explain how it's very important to know when you're in and out of combat. So you want to sheath your weapon, then you're in combat, your abilities light up, then you, after combat, you want to be sure to put your weapon down. Otherwise, you're going to be walking in a combat stance real slow like... Real slow like... It's important to understand, you'll notice that the this ability here goes from being grayed out to being lit up. And that depends on whether or not I'm in combat or out of combat. So it's very important to understand the difference between the two because in our game, um, out of combat, you can move quicker. If I draw my weapon, I now move more slowly. But there's also uh, combat bonuses like avoidance, block, and so on and so forth that you get when you're in combat but that you don't get when you're out of combat. So there are a variety of reasons that we've done this. It's not just for roleplay purposes. There is a significant strategic difference between in combat and out of combat, and there are some abilities that can only be used in either or cases. Moving on to the other UI element, there they talked about the armor class icon. Uh, located near your nameplate, uh, there's a little blue shield, and that is your armor class bar. As you take damage, if you go down, um, all this, all sorts of things uh, that will deteriorate this armor bar, uh, you'll need to go get that repaired by a blacksmith. And in the future, they did confirm that crafters will be able to repair it for you as well. Campfires, let's talk about them. They're awesome. Um, I really like this system. Uh, I, I wasn't a big fan of it at, at first. I'm like, oh, that's just, you know, let me just sit down and regen. But um, there is a lot of things that go into the campfires as far as just needing to regen your armor, take care of, uh, we'll call them death effects, um, uh, as they call them, wounds. Um, they do all sorts of things. And I'll, I'll here, just watch this. Campfires in our world um, help you first and foremost, um, 
regenerate your hit points and your stamina more quickly than if you were uh, doing it in the wild by yourself. Static campfires, which are ones that are always lit, have a set regeneration rate. Uh, campfires that can be lit by another player using the survival mastery have a higher regeneration rate and they have a sh have a limited window of time that they can last. Campfires are also important for our version of the... Uh, we can call it the death mechanic, even though it's not necessarily death. We did talk about this in the previous stream, so I don't want to dedicate a whole lot of time to it right now, but we, we can talk about it later on. Um, basically, uh, if you fall in combat, you can get a wound, which lowers... Here, I'll just kill myself real quick. Um, show some of our... Um, GM stuff. And you'll notice that I have a 10% wound on my character. Um, and uh, if someone can revive me real quick. Sure. Looks like it's getting dark as well. And he continues to show how he's regenning at a campfire to get rid of his wound or debuff or whatever you want to call it now i want to talk about darkness it's a thing it's actually a mechanic and it's pretty crazy now when i think of saga of leucemia one of the things that always comes to my mind is the torches um it's just kind of like a, a what they're known for is the darkness you can't see anything in front of you at certain times in night um, and it's, it's, it's a very real mechanic that you'll need that torch or you just can't see nothing. And this goes back into what Ren is, was saying this whole stream. It's paying attention to your quest steps. Paying attention to the NPCs and what they say and whatnot. Because you really gotta know where you're going. Because if you can't see at certain times of night and you don't have your torch out. I mean, you're just asking to get mauled by a bear. You're asking to get taken over by bandits or you know it, there's no telling what could happen if you can't see anything so i think it's kind of neat and that kind of brings me to what i want to talk about next because as they were going through in the stream and it's really dark they're doing the pulling mechanics like from everquest one and i'm like thinking whoa they're pulling like in everquest but in the dark you know like you you got to see a torch kind of go out of this distance and you see them fade away and then you see shadows running back to the group come on man that's pretty cool he also mentions how the darkness is going to vary in the gameplay so like it's going to be cloud coverage the size of the moon if it's full or half moon night you know and where you're at in the forest if you're if you got trees blocking the moonlight um, it's all these things uh, play a, a, a part in the darkness mechanic, I'd like to call it. Um, but another cool thing he mentioned is there'll be certain buffs and debuffs and stuff that light up, you know, and you, you have eight party groups. That's another important thing to take away from the stream, eight party groups. Um, and, you know, you can have someone bearing the torch and, and, and lighting the way uh, while your healers are healing and your tank is tanking and, you you know, you're going through this journey deep in the dark. Awesome! Another cool thing is, you know, they're doing the old school CC mechanic, crowd control. And just think about um, when the final effects are in the game, when they get more animators and whatnot. Um you're in the dark and you see this mezzed mob or whatever you know and it's dark but you see the spell effect over him i just think that's the contrast of that just happening it just seems really neat getting a little pumped not gonna lie so we kind of touched on it a little bit uh when we were talking about the armor class icon when you go down in saga you I mean you don't really die you and this is Saga's way of dealing with, with, with death. You go down, but if you're with the group, someone can res you. No big deal. You got a wound, you need a campfire, you got to regen that debuff off you. But if you're by yourself or your whole group wipes and you go down, down, you respawn at the main city. In other words, you got knocked out, someone drug you to town, saved your life. Um, now... 
Inventory management. And this is anyone that knows me and that's been watching us. You know I can't stand inventory management. I hate it. Um, anyway, the way they're doing it is really realistic and really pretty cool. Okay, you know, you can choose to go back out. So when you go down, you lose your backpack. That's the only thing. Um, so far, no one can go get your bag. I don't think that's ever going to be a thing because Ren does state this is a PvE game, not a PvP game. So you don't have to worry about other people getting your loot. But what you can do, if you're scared to go back out there and you haven't really collected much of anything, you can forfeit that bag and clear your inventory. Are you sure you want to forfeit the contents of your inventory? All of this will be lost. Yes. Boom. Everything's now my, my backpack is now gone. I lost it in the wild. I went to town. I bought a new backpack. All my coin that was in that bag is gone. Anything that was in that bag is gone. Inventory management is very important in our game, not just because of the size of your inventory, but thinking about the gear that you're taking with you and also what you're bringing back from adventuring. This is a game about strategy, taking it slow, thinking about things, going with friends, protecting each other, the group-based scenario. If you go out there on your own, it is a risk-based scenario. The fewer there are of you, the greater the risk. Now, you're never going to lose your equipped gear. Your equipped gear is always on you at all times, but the stuff that's in your bag, that's what you have to worry about. So if you're on your way back from a, an adventuring session, it's very important that you get, especially if like you've been on, you got down to the, you know, boss mob in a ray or in a, in a, in a dungeon, for example, um, and and that happens, like you're gonna want to go back and get that backpack because there's probably loot in there from the dungeon grind to get to that point. But if it's just like you ran out and harvested a few things and maybe it was just a bow and ten silver, it might not be worth it to you, so you could just forfeit it and, and choose to ignore it. Again, all these little points I'm touching on today in this video are they go in greater detail on the actual stream. So if, if you're tired of hearing my dumb face talk, check out the stream. I, I really encourage it. But um, I just know how some people don't have time to watch a three hour stream. So I thought maybe to crunch this down a little bit. I do like the way they're doing inventory because it's, it's again, this whole premise of, of, of saga is it's kind of realism right you're a normal dude you go out there or woman you go out there you get your masteries you can't carry you know tons of two-handed swords in a backpack that's just not realistic i mean you got your gear on you and then you got your items in your bag so check out the gameplay in the stream uh it's awesome if you got more questions uh head on over to saga of leukemia.com check it out join the forum sign up and maybe you can get uh, into some alpha access um i'm going to be playing at the time of this recording i'll be playing this weekend um getting my toes wet again and it's, it's just awesome. It's an awesome realism experience. I mean, you're immersed in this world whether you like it or not. If you don't like not having maps, if you don't like not having mounts, you know, then you know, this game may not be for you. And that's cool. But if you're, if you're wanting a true experience where you're just out there, normal dude, going along, you know, traveling and, and trying to find your way through, through this journey of white mist foothills... Um, you, you might want to give this a shot. Um, again, sagaofleucemia.com. Alpha is going on as this video comes out. Uh, it's for limited time only on the weekend. So you can go in and help test out some bugs and find bugs and kill bugs and all that kind of thing. Um, but if this video has piqued your interest at all, I encourage you to go watch the full stream over on Saga Leucemia's YouTube page. And uh, check it out because there's a lot of community questions. There's a lot more details. I just kind of went over some points that I thought were very important on a personal level. I just thought it was really interesting. And if you're interested in pre-ordering uh, Saga Leucemia, check out our affiliate link down in the description below. Help support us as we help support Saga of Leucemia. Be sure to like the video, thumbs down twice if you want, comment, share, leave some hate, leave some love, and we'll see you guys on the next video.